so just checking if i'm visible sir and audible uh, yes you are visible audible yes yes please proceed yeah. uh, thank you sir uh, for that introduction and uh, let me at the outset thank you thanks the iscm uh, national for giving us the opportunity and uh, it's a great topic and very relevant topic and uh, for that purpose uh, it's a philosophical topic so what actually uh, makes a good nurse as a great one so this is the topic for discussion today so before understanding any topic as uh, we are all bedside people we work at the bedside of the patient and we strive forward uh, for the betterment of the patient so it's always better to understand a situation where what does the uh, situation looks from the other side of the bed so just imagine how does this scenario plays out uh, if you all can close your eyes and imagine yourself uh, confined in an unknown place with unknown persons uh, who are wearing masks dresses they'll be coming and they'll poking you with the needles uh, they'll take your blood uh, keeping tubes in you and uh, you may or may not be able to talk to your loved ones as frequently as you want you cannot take your food uh, you'll be in lot of pain and there won't be proper control of the pain uh, and you don't even know when to get out of the place and whether you'll go out of this place or not uh, can you if you can all imagine this place if you are there at the bed and if you're in this situation just imagine how scary it would be so can you identify this place for me so as you can see this is a prison and uh, this is an intensive care unit so for all practical purposes uh, for a illiterate patient or a patient who is in lot of suffering who doesn't actually care about our medical terminologies and our uh, advanced treatments both of them looked same to the patient and so you need to understand how the things looks from the patient side and from the patient's attendant side then only you'll then only you'll become a more empathetic more understanding and you'll know how to approach the things in a different perspective so imagine this scenario uh, this is a very routine scenario but uh, just go just imagine that you are at the bedside uh, you see a patient a five year old girl is admitted in pediatric icu she already had an advanced uh, uh, hematological malignancy she is in severe pain and multiple lines uh, needles everywhere they are pricking the child every time the father and mother of the child are at the bedside and in tremendous stress at that time something suddenly breaks out in the father he starts arguing with the bedside nurse and bedside doctor that they are not controlling the pain properly they are not treating the child properly uh, i believe that most of us faced these scenarios uh, like difficult patients difficult attendants in the icus and in the wards uh, so suddenly uh, we cannot control the situation but at some point of time some senior nurse will come or maybe a senior doctor will come and uh, they'll talk to the patient attendants and they'll calm down and then the situation will be sorted out what actually is making the difference at this point of time uh, we need to understand from the perspective of the father and mother of the child so this is called as having a caring nature which is the first prerequisite of any good nurse or for any for that example any good medical professional so uh, this patient you no know, as you can see small girl in tremendous pain uh, for a father or mother at the bedside you no know, so it will be so difficult to see the patient herself and uh, the girl is an innocent girl she doesn't know much and the and they are they all have uh, clarity in their mind that this the patient is not going to survive in the long but still they are hopeful for, for some miracle to put down at this point of time the patients and attendants are tremendous stress so the only thing the senior nurse has made a difference is she has a different approach than the juniors here so this is the callous caring nature so caring nature is nothing but you need to understand the patient's situation from their perspective not from your perspective for you she may be a one of the nurse in 10 beds one of the attendants in for n number of attendants but for the family that makes a huge difference the same thing extends to the topic of empathy so empathy is different from sympathy sympathy is where you just show the uh, sympathy towards some other person who is a, who is uh, who is in a different difficult situation whereas empathy you are actually imagining 
that you are in the shoes of that uh, suffering patient then you are feeling their emotions and then you are doing the service as if you are doing to your own family or your yourself so here these uh, you the way you look at the patient the way you look at the attendants how do you make them feel that makes a huge difference and here if you have an elderly person small girl when you uh, give them a hug small touch take their hands in your hand that makes a huge difference and the patient uh, has the uh, confidence that you are on their side rather than you are just a part of some of the treating team so caring nature and empathy are the first prerequisite uh, which make a nurse a better one and i think not, uh, without these first two qualities however much in the knowledge you have um, like how many degrees you have it doesn't make any difference for the average patient so the same thing this here the approach is called as idet approach uh, here the senior nurse has followed this approach once you go and go and talk to the pa any patient or attendant try to acknowledge their suffering try to acknowledge their name their identity always try to address them in their uh, name and their identity rather than just as a bed number or a room number so that creates a confidence in the patient that uh, you are recognizing them as an individual then you always introduce yourself in a calm manner uh, collected manner then they'll understand that you are a medical professional and spend enough duration with the patient or attendant so the more the time you can uh, spend with the patient the more the confidence they are able to um, have in you and try to explain them the situation in a simpler terms try to avoid too much of medical jargon too many advanced terms and finally once you complete this one then uh, just say a simple thank you with a real conviction in your voice so that they'll feel gratified so these are all a part of communication skills as you know as you develop over the period of your career as your experience goes up these communication skills you tend to acquire naturally here the difference between the senior nurse and the junior ones is the way they communicate with the patient so how did the senior nurse communicate it here as you know is the communication important in the first part definitely uh, when uh, there was a large survey where they were conducted and the patient attendants and patients the real uh, successful nurses are the great nurses which were identified the patient attendants are the nurses who communicated better who actually anticipated their needs the patient needs here the most difficult part for the patient uh, father is to see the girl in suffering of pain so you need to address the pain first at least if you could not address it at least you need to tell them that uh, that some other senior person is going to come and you are going to escalate this matter in a compassionate matter if you are not going to discuss this specific need and you are going to discuss something else the some other concern no it doesn't make any difference for them and you need to show that all the staff which is included works as a team rather than any separate individuals you should not go for for example if the senior nurse goes there to their bedside the blames the junior nurse there then that actually doesn't create any confidence in the department as a whole you should show them that you are a part of the entire team and you should always resp respond with the care and compassion so compassion makes a huge difference and uh, here if there's going to be an any delay in the a treatment for example for some untoward delay maybe in the treatment food or whatever it may be always be honest with the patient and tell them in simpler terms so we are sorry for this but there's going to be some delay try to bear with us uh, if you escape this situation and not going to communicate with them it's going to be worse than the initial part and try to always be methodical when you are going to give the medication try to explain them the indication don't think that they don't know anything you may be uh, overcrowded you may have a uh, lot of shortage of time but always try to give respect to the specific uh, patient as an individual and when we're doing any invasive procedure uh, we all know that it's a uh, duty of the person who is uh, performing the procedure to explain the procedure and take the consent but always uh, remember that uh, as a bedside nurse you are the person who is going to stay with the person the patient for lengthier time and they have more confidence in you rather than any other foreign person coming and doing the procedure try to explain and clarify them and pain pain is going to actually impair the lot of quality of uh, icu stay or the hospital stay always address promptly and try to not uh, belittle them when they are uh, complaining about the pain so these all things basically comes out as a communication skill 
and uh, these are the parts of communication the only reason why i kept the, this uh, diagram is verbal communication as you can see in the top left corner where you are basically communicating verbally uh, about the specific part, uh, specific pain issue or specific procedure issue only forms a one quarter of the overall communication part whereas active listening to the patient when you are listening to the patient that makes a huge difference they will understand that you are actually giving them importance and you can actually understand uh, their pain and their interpretation better and compassion and delivery when you say something to the patient here the senior nurse have delivered in such a way with a compassion your tone intonation your pace of speaking you need to speak slowly you need to give some gap so the way you deliver your speech also makes a huge difference in the way you are communicating and uh, ultimately the non verbal cues the body language your body language creates a huge difference so when the you can see these these form the three quarters of the overall communication part the way you communicate with the patient so try to develop them rather than only the verbal communication so you can see in the picture there just just because you tell tell them that this issue is being sorted out doesn't mean anything your face your non verbal cues should communicate the same thing uh, you cannot keep a um, like a discongruous face and utter something and identify any barriers always try to see if there's any social barriers language barriers and talk to the patient in their own language rather than in your own your your language and don't make the promises you can't keep if uh, this illness is going to be a sick illness or is going to be a turbulent uh, period then tell them very frankly but in a compassionate terms so this basically summarizes the communication skills where uh, you are going to acquire over the period of time try to talk to your seniors more and more try to talk to the doctors try to talk to the other treating teams and more importantly the social workers in your team so they play a huge role in developing the communication skills try to understand the situation of the patient you cannot behave in a same way with a terminal malignant patient with an elective patient present posted for ptca so you need to have a different approach so a good nurse or a great nurse has a good communicating skills so coming to the third important quality you need to have is orientation to the details just see this scenario which is very common in most of the tertiary icus for example there's a 30 year old patient septic shock multi organ dysfunction is on multiple uh, machines ventilator crt machines with a high advanced setting maybe in a proning is on multiple inotropic supports nared vasopressin dopamine at this situation you can see the picture there how many pumps they they he is being connected how many machines is connected Uh, we do, we do it routinely day in and day out uh, this kind of situation for example there's a small like junior nurse who at the bedside suddenly the patient's bp started to drop and he patient the patient's heart rate drops so what do you do the uh, the nurse at the bedside they, she panics uh, she don't know what to do she call for the help then the bedside then the senior nurse comes then quickly they she will try to sort it out what is the approach here she followed she approach, she has a specific approach see the core see your core competency matters here so your confidence competency and calmness three of the most important qualities you need to have a clarity here so you can see here the nurse comes quickly check uh, whether this bp is real bp or not on the arterial line and the uh, invasive bp monitor on the monitor then if the bp is low the heart rate is low quickly they will she'll uh, uh, stop the ultrafiltrate in the crt machine start a fluid bolus and quickly identify the connections of the uh vasopressors she identifies that the nodal in the infusion port is not connected properly connects it and over a period of time slowly the patient status improves so what is the difference between the first nurse and the second nurse the first nurse and second nurse the difference is the second nurse knows where the fault can be and she has a methodical approach and she know each detail right from the infusion part to the machine to the patient everything is important here so she has a detailed approach here you can see the same master chart here in one of the icus you can see the parameters the each of the patient has to be monitored here you can see as we all know how many hemodynamic parameters are being monitored the ventilator parameters and there are fluids going on there is a nitroglycerin going on there is an adrenaline going on there is an atropid hourly they are monitoring the drains outputs everything so at this point of time so 
it's not about the problem solving at the in that one second it's about more understanding the patient in a whole and understanding and giving uh, importance to the each detail here the each ml of the or each micrograms of the vasopressor is important here so you need to understand the details so having a uh, detailed approach or having a methodical approach and giving importance to the each detail no that makes a huge difference and the next important quality each nurse needs to have is having an emotional stability so this scenario we had recently you had a major accident involving school bus multiple casualties were brought to the emergency and some of the children unfortunately were brought dead some of the children were uh, pretty in pretty bad condition who needs importance uh, and so here uh, as an er nurse if you're in that place no uh, the doctor has asked you or the senior nurse has asked you to triage the patients so it's a very emotional situation where you you are seeing a small children to see a kid in that situation is very difficult for any one any person and uh, if you have a kids at home it will be much more traumatic but the er nurse calmly she understood that some of the uh, casualties are already passed away could not much do much about it some of the uh, persons are beyond salvage so more importantly she identified the persons who are salvageable and uh, she shifted and triaged them and gave more importance to them and she gave less importance to the persons who, who were uh, very stable who are just creating a kind of noise there so here your job is to have an emotional stability here and uh, calmly sort out this issue how do you attain an emotional stability so there is something called as emotional intelligence like uh, normal intelligence so you need to have uh, daily uh, like uh, sittings with your seniors try to discuss the difficult scenarios and in an early part in your career maybe it will be difficult for you to see these scenarios but as the day in and day out uh, goes on in your career so you need to have a objectified mind so it doesn't mean that you are having an emotional ability you cannot the treat the person with compassion and uh, caring at the same time you need to have both of them so it is a very important quality how do you develop and uh, how do you develop resilience each of the person have a different ways of handling these things you can have a spiritual mentors you can develop your competency most important thing is develop your competency skills if you don't know how to assist the lines and tubes in the in difficult situation it going to be much more stressful for you so core competencies makes a huge difference and at the same time develop a team concept so each of your team has to support the other team member and you should always be optimistic just because you lost one person in your eyes you doesn't mean that the uh, it's everything end of the world so you need to uh, be very optimistic and uh, there is something called as burnout of the um, like uh, persons who are working in icus prolonged time as we seen in covid uh, with you numerous patients no so you need to have certain uh, methods to cope up with the burnouts so what is adaptability the next good quality you need to have what is adaptability uh, you can see the nurse here she has been working in pis up pediatric icu since 7 years and she is adapted to the kids keeping the line she she is in her comfort zone in handling the specific age group specific doctors her own teammates suddenly in the evening when she arrived at the evening shift no she was suddenly asked to go to the ecmo unit because sudden, suddenly someone fell short so what is your approach whenever you come to your shift in the evening or morning no suddenly if someone ask you to go and work in a different unit that too it's not in your comfort zone it's of a different capacity for from you it will be obviously difficult for you so ability to handle these situations is called adaptability how do you develop that adaptability uh, again you need to develop a holistic competency you need to able to handle uh, adult you adult patients at the same time pregnant patients at the same time pediatric patients so you may not be very good in certain group all groups but at least you need to have a basic competency if you develop this adaptability no uh, whether you go to a different country whether do go for do a different system you are going to be flexible and it's not going to create a too much stress for you at the same time always keep an open mind uh, go with a open mind go with a flexible mind so that you will uh, won't be too much of stress and develop a kind of uh, physical flexibility as well you need to have a lot of stamina so which we'll be discussing in the next slides 
we all know you are all very hard working in fact if i can be very honest you are uh, extremely hard working and more than any doctor i know and in fact if one of my patient survives if any of the icu patient survives 90% of the good work was done by the icu nurse so we all acknowledge that but uh, this is not a quality which you will be you will be taking for granted so you need to develop a habit of uh, hard work right from your uh, student career and this needs to go on as the time goes up in your career so if you develop a hard work in ethic no a, a good attitude people are going to respect you okay any person uh, when you see other person who is extremely hard working they are going to respect you but doesn't mean that you are doing a hard work uh, without any logic you need to have some uh, clarity in your mind so do do a hard work you need to have both the physical stamina and mental stamina we all see nurses at, attending prolonged surgeries in the operation theater in fact when i saw yesterday one of the nurses she was going at home at 11 o'clock in the night and we all have worked in the covid icus 12 hours 13 hours in uh, ppes wearing the ppes uh, even in the rehabilitation units when you are trying to mobilize the patient uh, you need lot of strength so you need to have a good good physical stamina and good physical stamina if you have a good physical stamina it is going to uh, give good mental stamina as well there is a very good evidence that both the physical stamina and mental stamina are uh, both related so how do you develop your physical stamina uh, good nutrition you might ask me where where is the time for taking good nutrition in the long shifts when you are going at home at night 10 o'clock yes we do agree that the shifts are very difficult and the taking nutrition at the right time is difficult but try to plan something try to take small breaks in between try to have a good team approach where some of the persons can go and have something and again come back and even if you are taking small meals or small uh, nutrition make sure that they have a good uh, good calories and good proteins in it and when you go back to your hostels or go back to your places try to have a good uh, uninterrupted sleep in the night rather than this one night of good sleep makes a huge difference and try to have go stretching and massages in between uh, stretching exercise it makes a difference when you especially when you are in prolonged shifts and uh, try to control your breathing so this was a habit which had which was uh, having a proven evidence when then during pps in italy and when most of the places when they initially started ppe the uh, nurses started to develop a control on their breathing this is none other than meditation in one part so try to learn it and try to visualize it this visualization concept was popularized by uh, athletes like uh, a great athletes olympic medal athletes no where you actually try to for example it's been very stressful for you you are going to have a lengthy shift and difficult shift try to visualize it uh, before going to the shift as well how the how the shift is going to play for you uh, what are the things you are going to act and how you are going to actually tackle them if you kind of it won't be sudden stress for you if you are going to visualize it and try to have a always have a water bottle with you make sure that you take uh, water in regular intervals and if you have a good hydration you your uh ability to prolong do prolong shifts will be much better rather than getting tired out so coming to the other important qualities of the nurses with the uh, um, who are really great uh, good judgment skills okay so the judgment skills is uh, it meets not exclusive for the doctors it is very important for the nurses as well so just see the scenario one of the patients was brought in an altered mental status elderly female a uh, son found her in the bathtub uh, she didn't recognize him she has a fever very hard and she is in a bit of altered sensorium as well so this patient was brought to the emergency or maybe in an icu uh, what are the major things the as a, a bedside nurse you need to understand here what is the judgment skill here the judgment skill is basically to understand the sin, uh, major problems here to understand the plan of action and to initiate the plan of action here and your competency or your uh, basic knowledge background also makes a huge difference here so the basic difference the sister has to identify here is that the patient is dehydrated uh, based on various evidence uh, there is a risk of a patient going into the shock the urine output has dropped patient is confused so at the same time when any patient who is confused what does that mean there is a risk of self harm as well and the patient see has a poor nutrition as well 
so that the, these as a bedside nurse the emergent uh, immediate response nurse you need to identify these things immediately so once you do this judgment then only you'll you start these basic uh, steps from your side when anyone ask you if you start charting the patient rather than first starting an iv it doesn't make any sense so among these steps no first keeping a good wide bore cannula starting the iv fluids sending the cultures and giving the antibiotic these are the ones which are very important at this bedside and this makes a huge difference for the patient in the judgment skills of the nurse and ultimately when you have an altered sensorum which is persistent go to the ct scan and ultimately the next things obviously will go in flow right so this is called as judgment skills uh, unless until you identify these these previous deficits you are not going to do these things and when once you judge the clinical situation when you are transferring this patient from to from the ER to the ICU you are going to give the handover like this elderly female came with altered mental status there's a source of sepsis looks like an urinary tract and when the presentation had your lactic acid was 3 after giving the fluids the lactic acid improved we given fluid you are going to continue the fluid in the ICU and you are go we have given first dose antibiotic please give that uh, rest of the things so this is the important things you need to give the handover handover to the patient we see sometimes giving prolonged handovers maybe get, uh, lasting up to one hour where they starts from minor details from place um, like a some like place person all those things rather than if you have a short time these are the more important things which you need to judge that which are very important for the person right so this is called a judgmental skills uh, which a great nurse possesses and you need to be very quick thinking as well you need to develop a thing i mean you need to develop very fast reflexes right so on one of the day when these are all real scenarios so the nursing supervisor will, when doing the rounds patient was complaining small dizziness she must have she could actually go and uh, tell us junior nurse to see the bp and go away or do some things but here she did do that she went and observed the pulse and she found that the pulse is on the lower side what did she do here she took an ecg and obviously there's a complete heart block you may or may not interpret the complex ecgs but here your job is to identify the uh, Uh, ecg patterns where they can actually think uh, kill the patient so immediately the doctor was called and the patient was shifted to the cath lab and the pacemaker was kept and the life was saved so the point here you need to develop is you need to have quick reflexes never neglect any small thing on the patient's behalf and uh, always anticipate the things if you anticipate then you are going to solve it if you cannot anticipate you are not going to solve the scenario and very important nowadays you may there are two types of uh, working one thing is to lead by the example other thing is just to follow the leader always try to be a leader right if you be a leader no you are going to develop and you are going to bring up your team as well so just an example here uh, ms jessica has joined as a new superintendent uh, she joined in a very new unit new hospital as well but as we our uh, in 2020 experience no within few days suddenly the covid cases started coming so then there is a huge pressure from the hospital to take care of the these patients we all have faced this scenario right what are the hurdles she is facing she is a new person to the setup itself so that itself is a hurdle she needs to understand how the setup works she don't know the team completely and the team is not completely very experienced team they may not know much in about the infection control practices about the covid everyone is afraid of covid at that time and once you started taking cases the staff are getting infected and they are going into quarantine and the persons who are at the um, like in unit they are getting burnt out because of huge case load suddenly some of the team members are disappearing and they are going to home so these are all real scenarios which she faced in the initial part how did she handle this uh, this uh, problems here she she first thing she have done is she acknowledged that there's a problem when you acknowledge that there's a problem then only the answer is going to come then she took a pen and paper make sure that who are the team members what are their strengths and weaknesses this is called as swot analysis strength weakness opportunities and uh, improvement so once she analyzed the strengths and weaknesses of the team members so she identified one or two good nurses who can actually handle pressure better who communicate better they she kept them as a seniors and the in charge nurses 
then the second, third, one of them will be infection control. One of them will be taking care of the infected nurses. So she developed a rapport with the doctor. She developed a rapport with the operations team. So over a period of one month, you, when you are strong in your stance, no, slowly the situation comes into the control. And after one year, after a year, the handling of the this entire problem, she, she became a real leader. She was a leader to start with and people really respected her. And she now she is a topmost leader in her field. So she has benefited, her team has benefited, the hospital has benefited, and the patient has benefited. So this is called as leadership skills, which is very important for any nurse and decision making. So you need to be a person who is a decision maker rather than indecisive person. Okay. When just like the previous scenario, when you're doing this decision making, you need to explore the alternatives. Among them, you need to choose the reliable alternatives. Once you implement this decision, again, you need to go back and audit the results of the implementation. Once you do this regularly, this becomes easy for you and your system works, right? So once we have uh, discussed the serious qualities, no more humorous qualities. Okay. So this is called a sense of humor. We all know our medical persons, whether it's a nurse or a doctor and any other paramedic, we have a different type of sense of humor uh, when you compare with the non-medical persons, right? So we regularly see day in and day out, death, uh, loss of limb, morbidity, all the painful things we regularly see it and we handle with so much of pressure. You can handle all these things only if you have a sense of humor, okay? Try to find the sense of humor in even the most difficult uh, parts of the day, even the darkest places of the day, okay? Just because you have a sense of humor, it doesn't mean that you are making the situation light, but you are actually trying to cope with the scenario. And the sense of humor, uh, you have a lot of resources, you have various books, various journals with a lot of jokes. Try to have it develop and try to always joke around in your team. Uh, try to have this. This is a, one of the very good way of coping up with the stress. And very important and most of the junior nurses asks us, how do you manage that time? Right? You have the senior nurses who are actually very calm, collected when there's... In, on the other day, one of the night duties, there were three or four uh, like code blues in the hospital. In, in ICU patients, through two or three patients uh, suddenly deteriorated. The nurses who are at the in charge nurses, they are they are handling it very calmly. Whereas at the junior nurses who are recently joined, you know, they are getting stressed up. So what happens if you can't handle the time? So your shift gets prolonged. The person who was supposed to go out of the shift at eight o'clock in the morning, you no. Know, so you tend to not chart the master charts. You tend to not uh, sign off your medication charts. You forget about giving the food to the patient. Then slowly, the shifts prolongs, and uh, you the person who is supposed to go at eight o'clock goes at ten o'clock, still with an incomplete uh, um, like uh, patient routine. And how, and even if she goes, no, there are a lot of lack at that time, and you are again called back from your hostel. You will ask to fill up the a lot of the vacuum at the signatures, all those things. No, so how do you basically handle that time? So time is very precious. To handle the time, you have these three tips. Okay. So the best nurses handle very good time management and uh, they have their own personal space once they go back from the hospital and they have their own life. Okay. If you can't practice this time management, it's going to be very tough for you. How do you do it? These are three terms, organization, prioritization and delegation. Okay, delegation, organization is first you organize your activity. Once your star, shift starts, maybe they have given you three patients. So try to take a pen and paper and chart out the activities you need to do it over the night. Among them, you prioritize it. Okay, so for example, one patient is on ventilator. Your job is to do regular suction, maybe give a rail shift feeding, which are more important ones. And, and make sure that you tick it off in your own, uh, own rather than the only master chat. Try to develop a habit of doing that and uh, make sure that you gather all the supply. For example, you have a ventilator patient, you'll be requiring suction cats, cathy kit, or maybe you have a uh, patient who is about to be intubated, you require a boozy, all uh, those kind of uh, supplies. You anticipate in the shift itself and try to indent and keep it in the impress stock. So that when the regional situation comes, you are not going to be stressed out, right? To develop this, two habits you need to develop is having the knowledge about the patient and the anticipation. 
and always the break down the tasks into smaller ones okay if you have a long uh, task try to bake it into the smaller parts and try to delegate it to the juniors as well if you are the shift senior try to delegate into the smaller parts and try to give the less stressful ones to the junior nurses so this way you are going to teach them at the same time you are going to cut down the stress on yourself as well so which is very important for the time management prioritization among the if you have a very less time priority like airway handling uh, sick patients these are the more priorities and uh, here what are the barriers in not doing this stuff and uh, not doing time management you see patient you see junior nurses getting very stressed up no uh, they are we see people crying without the time management the, pro the problem here is they are not able to plan it properly and uh, you the, see you you know about success how to organize the uh, your unit uh, try to avoid the clutter okay try to keep each uh, equipment in its own place try to keep your emergency medicines in its own place try to avoid unnecessary activities okay so these things and multitasking night to never try to do a multitasking at the same time okay try to delegate each of them if you do these things you are going to manage your time very well and uh, last three good qualities of the person for any uh, great nurse is you should be a good manager as well just you see nurse managers as well which is going to be the future who is a nurse manager nurse manager is basically a combination of an executive as well as a nurse so she can do the nursing at well she is basically a liaison between the nursing director and the ground level stuff the staff and what are her responsibilities her responsibilities is making sure that the unit functions in a proper way staffing uh, is in a proper way is there's an employee satisfaction is there any difficulty from the uh, bedside nurses is the customer is satisfied and is the budget uh, for example the nurses need something or the bedside uh, there's a need of something she is able to escalate it to the nursing director and to the operations team this is called as a manager and future uh, in there's a role of you there's a huge role of these uh, nurse managers so you need to know how to manage the things in your unit as well and uh, it doesn't go with uh, without saying uh, see when you are a nurse you are it is your job to teach and educate your uh, colleagues especially the junior colleagues so you need to be an educator as well and uh, unless until you publish so there is a physical wealth and there is an academic wealth so the people recognize you based on the research you do right so how do you do how do you become a good nurse educator or researcher you need to develop a habit of reading regularly uh, try to develop good uh, new maneuvers, develop nurse curricula and try to always talk to the juniors and see what they need at the uh, in the education part and once you do it people respect you and you can go to the much bigger levels they will take you as a policy developers evidence uh, evidence based medicine all those things you can do it okay so this is this is a very important quality in the future and you need to have a lot of good publications and the great nurses well recognized nurses all over the world are ones who had a good number of publications as well and the last important quality but not the least important quality you should always protect the patient try to maintain a safe environment okay just because the doctor has ordered some procedure some difficult procedure doesn't mean that it is a uh, necessary step so you can always go and contradict if you think that this particular medicine or particular procedure is going to harm the patient no just an example you know that there's a terminal malignancy patient the patient has a clear uh, do not resuscitate order but the duty doctor is going to either way go and intubate the patient you need to stop there because you are uh, your duty lies with the patient okay the patient trusts you with their life and you need to protect them in all parts way. and you are basically a clinical advocate for them and this again uh, when you are not giving a medicine which is actually patient having an allergy that you are protecting the patient there so your most important quality is protecting the patient especially the vulnerable groups like uh, elderly people uh, pediatric group people or dependent people who are not able to move so you need, you need to protect them. So to summarize it, nursing is not for everyone. You are all great heroes and uh, you are doing a great job, but you can always have a potential to, to become a great one from a good one. 
So a great nurse is always very empathetic. She has a very caring nature and compassionate nature. Uh, she always gives very good importance to the small details because each detail is important for the patient. Very hardworking person, has a good physical stamina as well as mental stamina. And uh, she's go she or he is going to be very emotionally stable. So they are not going to be crumble with small circumstances, however much that shift is going to be difficult. They manage the time very effectively. You all, she or he is going to protect the patient at all sorts. And they are going to be the leader for the team and leader for the hospital on a larger perspective. And always have a good sense of humor. Uh, try to not lose this good sense of humor. Thank you so much. And uh, we can, uh, as a doctor, we cannot do the stuff. You can do it. And the hats off to you. And uh, having uh, this job as a nurse, no, it is not a simple job. It is a great opportunity for showing a kindness to the another patient where you are uh, saving a patient and saving the family as well. So try to make a well of it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deepak, uh, for a detailed and wonderful presentation. I think a lot of thought process has been uh, put by the Deepak. A lot of brainstorming things and go, uh, gone in the quiet depth of the perspective. Because doctors talking about a good nurse or leader nurse is not an easy thing. Because unless and until you think of the same role as a doctor when you are a nurse, what will be expected for a good nurse? I think the Deepak has imagined for himself, uh, for being a, a nurse at the bedside, what qualities we want for that person. I think then only it, it, it will come out of the thought process that what makes a good nurse. I think uh, he has took a lot of points for a nurse. Uh, the, any person cannot become a nurse. Very important for nurse, the better qualities for the nurse for the personal level, the academic level, and the manager level, and the some of the administration level. So that he told very well, when we are coming to the healthcare industry, it is very important to have get, uh, maintain your good health. So that very important to give concentration of your health. There's no need to tell, he told a lot about, about the personal health. We should never neglect about the personal health. Because we, what we tell, we want to become a Lambe Reska Goda, not a short Reska Goda. When you want to become a Lambe Reska, uh, the horse is there so that we have to have the understanding, the empathy, the patience, understanding, uh, taking care of the people, respecting the other people's opinion, what is there, respecting them, talking to them, cool, calm, controlling your emotions, controlling your anger, all things are very important is there. And always you have to use I change I to the we that makes a lot of difference when we tell we are doing it that makes a lot of uh, the message given to the patients and patient family not only one person is involved the team of the people is involved other thing you be smartness is there in the present situation how to handle when some crisis happens for the patient you have to point out where the particular problem is there whether the problem is there from the patient side the because of the machine side or the medication side or something else problem has came for the patient the, uh, the other important thing about the communication, communication, not only the communication between the colleagues, communication between the medical fraternities and communication with the patients and family. I think all these angles are very important for the communication, not only keeping the information for yourself. When the information is important, information given in a proper way at a proper time uh, with, a, uh, with the, the content, what important things are there, that is very important. And at the same time, when something is not there, when the patient getting in cardiac arrest, we can take a leadership role also. And the other important thing is there for the nurses in our place also. Uh, every occasion comes, you try to celebrate. is very important. As happiness is there for getting small, small things. When the sickest patient comes out from all things are there, we feel very happy. We should celebrate as a team, both medical professional and uh, even the, the nursing professional also. Because... A lot to achieve in the life, but the happiness will be there for the small things. Some you do a successful procedure, you are able to handle a difficult relative. You are able to uh, you are able to handle and take care of the patient without the bed sores, without thrombophlebitis, without infection for the patient. That is also a great achievement for the nurse, particularly in the intensive care unit. Other thing as I told about uh, Deepak told about the time management because we are having some fixed hours duty, six hours, eight hours, or twelve hours duty is there. We have to divide the time. What is priority is there? Uh, some of the people are only 
getting busy with the documentation uh, they are writing only they are giving the medications and not doing other things i think uh, the time management is very important so that reason priority has to be given and not only the things what you are keeping with yourself the education and spreading the knowledge to the colleagues is very important uh, with this we have some mcqs uh, uh, to discuss uh, what are the people for last 45 minutes what deepak has taken lot of effort for presenting this topic uh, we can put some uh, mcqs deepak 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 you are mute yes sir yes, mute sir. so one of the student has risen his i think and i will is so sir so go ahead sir i'll be changing the slides you can ask the questions and okay. the students uh, can uh, type uh, the answers in the chat box yes yes uh, so that some of the th what we discussed for last uh, 40 45 minutes or so um, deepak has told so that uh, we'll see how much you are the attention is there and how much you are the the general knowledge is there about uh, the the specialty of the medical field and in the nurses uh the first question uh, what is there about the define the nurse i got into who you can type your answers in the chat box so that we can check your chat box and uh, we'll inform and we we'll discuss that uh, things also so we will wait for around 15 seconds or 20 seconds till we get the response define the nurse according to who i think nobody has put anything in the chat box we'll go to the next slide deepak yes sir so that uh, what we discussed about for last 45 minutes and so the nursing and nursing encompasses autonomous and collaborative care of individuals of all ages families groups and communities sick as well as in all the set it includes promotion of the health prevention of the illness and the care of the ill disabled and even the dying persons also okay so that your role is there for the prevention the treatment and even for the palliation care also that not only because the intent the, the, the this is the forum of intensive care not only the sick patients but you have to take care of the dying patients counseling prevention is very important uh, the, that is the definition of the who next slide next question now is very important this photo i think is this the if you see this picture it became a quite viral uh, the identify the great nurse it is from india most of the times we are discussing from the western world what is happening uh, the what is the name of the nurse from where she was there and what happened to her i think somebody has uh, put here the answer as this she yes sir they uh, sister are lini they answered correctly yes absolutely correct answer she was the sister lini next slide so she was the sister lini who is a great person who sacrificed her life for uh, during the nipah virus epidemic uh, husband and young kids uh, so we need to remember our own heroes from india so that's the reason we kept it this one uh, thanks i think uh, somebody is remembering for the lini sister her uh, Lini Putseri, who was the hero while di dying during the taking care of the Nipah virus uh, breakdown, what happened uh, the, in the Kerala in I think 2018 and 19, and subsequently we had all these things. And, Always, uh, you are remembering the heroes from the Western country. It is important to remember remember our own people who has contributed for the growth of our organization or the society in India itself. Next she, question. She was awarded with the Florence Nightingale Award by the Indian government also. So. what are the the qualities of a good nurse uh, what we seen in the last 40 45 minutes deepak has told about the decision making and the guidance is important conflict resolution and effective communication change management or adaptability commitment to the educational and professional development you can put answer in the chat box decision making and guidance is very important conflict resolution deepak has shown the case of a young boy what the conflict was there and the communication he told about verbal communication non verbal communication change the management and adaptability as the situation comes you have to go forward commitment to education and professional development 
education or academics play the silver lining to the uh, the personal growth of the person i think some of the people are given the answer about a b c d and all of the above actually the answer is about the all of the above the reason you are seeing a person as a holistic approach okay and not as a individual thing uh, sir i think some of them are raising their hand can we give them the opportunity to talk maybe uh, yes yes definitely definitely how to do that dawal madhu dawal has to uh, give them the control i guess can we dawal dawal we are able to hear dawal okay we uh, if possible we'll do it in the last sir otherwise okay i think dawal is unmuted dawal those who are people are doing the raising the hand can we ask them give an opportunity to talk to them so the reason behind that we don't do that is because uh, some of them they screen their answer so we do oh. not know whether they want to answer a question or they just because at times they use it from the mobile so they just raise their hands no problem no problem then if there's anything uh, please uh, type in the chat box yeah okay. next question now it is very important when is the international nurses day is 11th of the june 11th of the may 12th of may or 12th of june i think recently everybody has celebrated the nurses day which date was there i think most of them are answering it sir <laughs> i think most of the people answered as uh, the 12th may and uh, you can actually type why it is the celebrated as international nurses day also can be any reason is there why why that particular day has been selected why not the other day in the june july other month yes i think yes that is correct okay florence nightingale the birthday was there of the 12th of the may that was the reason it was celebrated as a international nurses day i think good 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 nice next what makes a great nurse nurse should be competent and compassionate nurse should be skillful nurse should be commanding and nurse should have a leadership qualities so that what makes a great nurse they should have compassion and competency for the work what they are doing in the field they should be definitely skillful they should have command and a leadership role when the situation is there they should take in your hand uh, like a cpr is there so that somebody has to take the lead role and coordinate i think among most of the people which is, among them which is the most important quality most of the people did as all of the above but if you have one of the choice what are you going to do it which is the most important one for any great nurse among all of them what is the first quality which we discussed first quality which we have discussed now most of the answers came all of the above and the answer is coming a c now that we have given a clue then <laughs> sir and even b so the competency and the compassion which is the most important for any nurse and uh, if without it i think all the qualities are going to be nullified so if you can't have a compassion for your fellow human being and if you are not competent in your core uh, subject okay so it is going to be futile however much the leadership you are going to have if you don't have a compassion and competency without compassion your patient is not going to respect you without competency your fellow colleagues are not going to respect you so both are extremely important okay we'll go to the next question i think they are going i think to... that everybody should be able to give the answer we no need of giving the choices who's the famous nurse i think answer given the previous questions only we'll move to the next most commonly used model of care in the icus is functional nurse team nursing primary nursing or total patient care the most commonly used model of care in the icus whether a functional nursing team nursing primary nursing a total patient care
So there are varied answers. Some of you have answered B, some of you have answered D. So some of you are answering the summer things as well. So in so the answer is total patient care. Okay, so you have various nursing models. Total patient care is there's a full independency where one nurse, one registered nurse is going to take care of the patient as a whole. She is competent in all the various spectrums. Whereas other nursing models are where each of them separates. For example, nurse takes a leader's leadership in one of the nursing model where another is people, they'll be keeping with the handling with the IV cannulas, uh, uh, somewhere there's a hospice model, this kind of stuff. But uh, most of our hospitals follow the total, total patient care model where uh, one nurse is competent enough to handle all the spectrums of the patient care. And uh, uh, that will be actually much uh, proven model where uh, it gives a complete control for the registered nurse as well as it uh, better for the patient because they're comfortable with one nurse. So close. Okay. So that uh, is very important by the hunter paradigms. You treat a disease, you win, you lose. You treat a person, I guarantee you will win no matter what the outcome is there. That important thing is there, uh, the, particularly the nursing care, not only the patient how comes out or become a positive morbidity or moderate, but important thing is there whether required for that patient, everything has been done or not is more important. Sometimes outcomes are not in our hand. That uh, the uh, the what we discussed about the various qualities for being, being a great nurse uh, when we are working particularly in the critical care units is very important to keep all these things in the mind. Uh, with this, uh, I think uh, we discussed for last hour and so we had a good response for the questions and answers also and participants also. Uh, with this, uh, I once again thank you, Dr. Deepak, uh, for presenting a wonderful topic, we giving a lot of thought process. Thanks to the ISCM, uh, the central, uh, the uh, regarding the the step nursing courses, they are going running very well. Uh, every week is happening with a new topic, with the new thought process, and a lot of people are getting benefit and advantage. Those people not able to watch now, even that is available on the online also. With that, we thank you everyone, and we declare the session is closed. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you, sir. Thank you all the nurses uh, for having us and for your patient uh, listening. And thank you, ICCM. Thank you, Shamsundar, sir, as well. And uh, hats off to you for being a great nurses.